Alas, my love, you do me wrong to cast me off this courteously, for I have loved you well and long delighting in your company. Green sleeves was all my joy, green sleeves was my delight, green sleeves was my heart of gold, and who but my lady green sleeves hello everybody this is your host nino and i am greeting you to another episode where we shall be exploring the future of computer processing as well as storage you know, some of you may have heard ideas that this might lie in cloud computing, but I do tell you, it is punch cards. Just like this one, huh? This one is self-made. So, <laughs> what are we up to tonight? Well, in serious, what you have just witnessed is perhaps the most old-fashioned type of... Uh, smartphone accessory, namely a punch card reader of own design. After a lot of failed experiments, now successfully operating and reading this punch card into ASCII signs on my computer through a USB connection. Now, just to explain to you a little bit the setup of what you're seeing here, well, this is evidently the smartphone, but it is dying quickly, so I have used uh, this little device here in order to split the port uh, on the one hand towards a battery, so that it's charging and not dying immediately, and on the other hand, to this Arduino Mega Type board, Mega 2560. Yeah. And that I have wired up to this marvelous contraption of the future brought to your home through this video, and which we shall be actually exploring now in detail. So, you know, let's be frank, we all wanted to have a punch card reader for our modern devices, or perhaps a smartphone takes it a little bit far. And if you think about it logically, this isn't even a very difficult endeavor from a theoretical perspective, right? So, first of all, you will need to figure out what sort of format of punch card would you like to handle. And this is basically what I have settled for. So the number of rows, like if, if each of these is a row, is not really relevant. Relevant is, so to say, the number of columns, and these are 8 for an 8-bit byte, as well as a ninth column, which I call the guidance, uh, the guidance bit. This is not really transferred into data, but it allows the reader software to realize when a new byte has come to be read. And that happens if first there was brightness, and I'll, I'll tell you a little bit further about it in a moment. So if first there was a, a signal, then there was no signal because we have been between bytes, and then there is a signal again. And that will allow you to input, for instance, if this were 
if this were, you know, not punched through, to input a perfect zero byte, where all bits are zero. Because you still can get by the guidance bit that now there is a valid byte, even though you do not get a signal. Now, what signal am I talking about? Well, I should explain a couple of the technical details in case you would like to do this experiment at home. And, well, once you hear the details, you'll figure out what to do and be what to better, better let be, right? So, having a guidance track proved extremely beneficial because that way I do not have to insert the card in the reader in any certain speed. It is just as fast or as slow as I like it. The only thing it really pays attention to when it is reading here the basically the punched holes is whether there has been a change of um, punch, no punch, punch, no punch, right? So that is how it is registering a line of punched holes and each line represents one byte. And in this case, indeed, one letter. So, how is the card read? Well, serially. Basically, there is a reading infrastructure which is going through it line by line and scans each line as the card passes through the device. Now, the simplest way of constructing such a detector failed. And that was simply having a contraption like that, where basically pins of the Arduino are connected here to, uh, to clips, which are wrapped around the sushi stick and, and fixated with a little bit of foam so that it's pressing outside. And then going through and seeing where these will make contact with uh, with another, you know, with a cathode, like with another electrode. Which incidentally was uh, another sushi stick which was just sitting opposite of it and it was wrapped in tin foil. Now, while this idea sounded nice in theory, it just did not work out in practice because it turns out to be practically impossible to put these in a perfect alignment. Like, there is always one or two of these which is not going to press down with the proper force to the proper extension and thereby no contact will be made even if there is a hole and contact would be generally possible. So, like I even tested it simply with, you know, the other opposing sushi stick and that and not all of the bits were set. So unfortunately, that venue proved futile. So what did I instead go for? Well, I guess many of you have already correctly guessed it. Namely, I went for light resistors, for resistors whose resistance value is changed by the light which is shining on top of them. And here actually, if you look carefully, you can see the heads of the resistors inside. And uh, here you can actually see, if you look carefully, a couple of LEDs, whereby each LED is shining on one detector, so to say on one resistor. And if the card is traveling through and there is a hole, then this shining will be received and otherwise there will be no light. Now, that may have sounded simple, but I tell you, until you calibrate this, until you get this going, it's quite a story. These fancy sticks here have the role of a sledge because otherwise the card would be caught inside on the heads of the detector or perhaps even on the LEDs. But by having these sticks as dividers, each LED is insulated from the other LEDs, 
so that if it is blocked, it is not somehow diagonally shining on neighboring elements. So that actually really helps accuracy. Now, a little bit perhaps about the LEDs. They are connected here in parallel, right? So here is a minus connection, here's a plus connection, here are the LEDs. There's no control over them, they're just connected to 3.3 volt and they have a little 220 ohm resistor. Now, one special thing to note is that we're dealing really with nine possible bits which rules out the use of a general Arduino Nano or Uno because unfortunately these boards which I'm actually very fond of are having only eight analog pins but our detection is working through analog pins this is where these uh, resistors are actually wired to so each of these resistors you see is wired to a uh, um, to, to, to three exits basically, like the legs are exiting on, on two places and you're connecting them on the very end here to plus and minus, but in between you're having here the resistors, 10k each, and before the resistor you each time have to exit to a pin. So that's how they are, um, signaling to these analog pins what sort of uh, value is right now received depending on the transmission of light towards them. The first mistake I made by the way was I tried to wire the pins, uh, the LEDs in serial rather than in parallel. It looks beautiful right? Like when you look at it there is some aesthetic to it. Yeah but I'll tell you what it does it causes such a voltage drop that I haven't yet figured out with what this needs to be operated, but certainly it is way about above the levels which you would normally be using in an Arduino. So unfortunately, beautiful as it is, this is now going to be maximum a Christmas decoration. I don't even know what I'll be using it for that. So these were a couple of the the traps I was facing. So beware to keep the connection here parallel. Beware to insulate the lights from each other. Beware to uh, devise some way for the car to travel through cleanly. I recommend this sort of sledge so that the card is not catching itself in your detection elements. And well, other than that, it's actually quite simple. And well, I do assure you a ton of fun. So what should I say? Perhaps you would like to see it close up one more time for goodbye. So let's, let's make it some space here. So you see travel again through. Can I perhaps put this on something closer? Mm -hmm. Give me a second. All right, I hope you can see now the screen clearly. And on we go. So this is traveling now through. And you can already see that as I am pushing through this card, as slowly or as quickly as I am in the mood of, the detection is happening correctly and my lady green sleeves is output. I just have like this one issue at the end where um, <laughs> the end of the card itself is understood to be uh, an own byte. Well, that's evidently incorrect, but 
add some detail. The general reading is working just fine. And so, if you too would like to experience the future of computing, then I clearly recommend you do not go for cloud, go for punch cards. So, <laughs> thanks for joining in tonight. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening. And for me, goodbye.